You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens, and today we have a bonus Saturday morning episode for you all. The Lake Manassas controversy is really heating up. And we talked a little bit about it on a live stream a while ago. This topic deserves its own podcast episode. So without further ado, here you go. Bassin with Big Ol'. A huge golf course lake and won't let folks fish it. A bunch of lakes in VA like that. Yeah, but, but this article was just, it, it's insane to me, the sheer hubris of it. And honestly, I'm just going to get it up right now. Why you can't swim or boat on Lake Manassas. And I love how this article first starts with swimming in lakes, but everyone's terrified. People just want to go swimming in lakes. Why you can't swim or boat on Lake Manassas? Closed off for 10 years. Some want Lake Manassas reopened to the public. So I just love how this, this article is first like some want the lake to be reopened to the public. That is such a pretentious asshole. Like some peasants out there are, are worried that the, the private lake for us mere upper class, they cannot access it. We have heard these peasants bitch enough, and so we'll just say the little people, someone, something wants this lake opened. I wonder why. You can look at it and stand on its banks in and fish in it, but whatever you do, don't boat or swim in Lake Manassas. And I, so, I, guys, enjoy this line here, and this is, again, why this is, you can look at it. That is a California, I come from money, or a big city and I just bought a big ass house and I want to be able to take Instagram photos to send to all my girlfriends. You can look at the lake. You, that's not illegal there, but God damn it. Do not get out on the water. Do not get out in that water. You can stare at it and you can take photos, but do not touch the water. The lake remains closed to the public this summer as it has for every summer since 2004. Manassas officials say they must do everything to protect the city's drinking water, the supply from contaminants, or the invasive zebra mussel. How many lakes, believe it or not, can you actually fish that are public drinking water? There's a lot of them. So this is a bullshit argument because Beaver Dam Reservoir, I believe, is also public drinking water. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Chad, help me out, the Baltimore lakes that you have to pay a shit ton of money to get a boat into... You can still fish them. You can still boat on them. And that's public drinking water for Baltimore. So Manassas, are you saying that you're more important than Baltimore? Who has more people in it? Is it Baltimore or is it Manassas? Hmm. It almost feels like that's a fall guy. So that feels like a little BS to me. Cool. Those who get caught in the lake risk br breaking the law. Oh, my God. You go to prison. What would you do? I sold drugs. You, I murdered a guy. What did you do? I went fishing on a lake. Five to life, yo. But many who live on or near our 770-acre reservoir. By the way, that's insane how big that place is, and you can't fish it. That is criminal. This is not like a 50-acre dinky little reservoir. This is a massive body of water that they have to patrol. Like, a Sleater's Lake is 100 acres. Think about that for a minute. Think about that. And Sherwood, that's a damn good point. He's caught this in the con. Aquan Reservoir is Fairfax drinking water. Yeah, and you can run a big engine with gasoline on that place and they don't give a shit like this is such a bs argument to start with uh other reservoirs in the area like stafford's new rocky pine reservoir allow non-motorized boats kayak fishing but no swimming i love how swimming comes up there it's like i grew up in a time where you could go swimming at lakes it was i was more i was i was raised country basically you did that sort of thing who in manassas is actually going to go swimming in a lake you have pools and stuff like that generation, I feel like is dying off the, the lake swimmers and the river swimmers. So very wise. Isn't the Potomac River drinking water for most? Like, yeah, the Potomac River is too. Yeah, the Potomac River. And that's what I'm saying. Like, it's such a, I saw in this comment thread about everyone's like, well, it's drinking water. It's like bullshit. Like you're drinking out of the Potomac. People piss in that thing. Like it's people run big engines. You don't know what stuff is being drained down there. It's fine. It's not going to be an issue. They use that as a fall guide because if anyone wants to pass laws, they use safety as the issue. That's how they get around it. But well, for your safety, we have to do this to you. Uh, yeah. Those who want the lake reopened say similar rules could be implemented at the Lake Manassas. So I like how they're saying like certain rules, like you can't have a motorized boat when it's already been debunked that you can have motorized boats. The issue with motorized boats, let's be honest here, 
and I get this more from a safety factor is you would have to have like a 10 horsepower issue. Otherwise you're going to have wake boaters and you're going to have lunatics on jet skis running around. And could you believe if the res had jet skis or a bunch of wake boats or something like that, it'd be insane because it's just not big enough for that. So that I kind of get, um, or you'd have to do like a 10 horsepower restriction, which is I'm fine with two, but okay. Let's just say, let's assume that you can only use electric motors and you could boat and do electric motors. Okay, fine. Fair enough. That's fine. At least you can fish it. Those who want to reopen the lake say rules could be implemented at the Lake Manassas. The city currently, Oh boy. Now th this is it right here. The city's the city currently budgets $83,000 in funds from its annual budget to police the lake in an effort to keep out the public. Holy shit, Carly. What? Look at this article right here. Yeah. Who look this is this is this is the state from Manassas. Those who want to reopen the lake say the rules could be implemented at Lake Manassas. The city currently spends $80,000 a year to keep people off the lake. Whoa. The lake is almost 1000 acres. Yeah, I, I like whole. They're spending almost a hundred thousand dollars a year to say stay off it, and this is how this article like starts. And by the way, this is a lake that was bought by a golf course. It's not illegal to look at it. <laughs> Isn't that the most pretentious thing to say? It's like no, no, no. You can look at it. I yeah, but you, but it's still like, who starts the article like that? It's like it's not like you can't look at it or something. Like that's the selling point. It's like oh shit, as long as I'm allowed to look at it, oh, that's yeah. not we're not going to incriminate you for that. You just can't touch it. It's like, no, you can look at the horse. You just can't touch it. It's, it's like, that's the big selling point. But I would like to ride there. No, 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 you can't do that. But you can take a picture with it. That's fine. That's absurd to me. Anyway, we're going to get back. <laughs> this is a big ass number. This is the first time I actually read this thing. Probably should have done that beforehand. Fishing is only allowed on, on the bank of Lake Manassas if permission obtained from private property owners. So I love how this is also phrased. We're like, fishing is allowed if you get permission. So it's not even like this is like a public lake. They're like, yeah, you can fish from the lake if you get permission to fish there, which is like a no shit clause. Yeah, you you can you can look at the golf course, but you can't play on it. <laughs> you can look at the jewelry, but you just can't steal it. Who live on the lake? Console console members say that that while concerns over the security and safety of drinking water and zebra mussels are real, just that's BS. Our past experience with the lake shows that it is very unlikely that any type of marine operation which would act as gatekeeper for the lake use would be financially profitable, says the city's person who I don't care about. In the past, the city provided a subsidy to marine operator. None of the new proposals we have seen regarding lake access show that they would be self-sustaining financially. So... Let me wrap my brain around this real quick. What you're saying is it is cheaper for you to burn $100,000 a year to keep people off the lake. That is more financially responsible than putting in a boat ramp. I need to see the books, please. I don't want just an outlier of, of you saying, no, 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 trust us. Listen, it's cheaper for us to burn $100,000. It's way more financially responsible to do that than to put in a boat ramp. I'm telling you right now, we pay to go the down the greenway in northern virginia almost what five to ten dollars with a fast pass imagine if you had a lake like this and again you have an electric kiosk and this is what they should have i think i mentioned this with bob on his show you have one of the electric kiosks for like leesylvania boat ramp or, or or smallwood state park or manassas lake you have an electric kiosk. The thing goes down. You have either the electric card reader right there, or you get a puck, and then you drive your boat up at four in the morning. Yep. You insert your credit card, whatever, five bucks to go into the lake. Bing, bang, boom. Gate opens up. You go right through. Boom. You automatically get your money, and you get to keep people out of the lake. And guess what? You don't need a person there either. It's that simple. I have always been side tangent. I have never, I've always been blown away by you need somebody there at four in the morning. And they ask for like a dollar ninety eight in exact change, or you can't get in, or it's like I want you to take a stamp and a piece of paper and then fold it up and lick it and then stick it in a little mailbox. It is twenty twenty three for the love of God. Why is it I can drive at hundred miles an hour down a turnpike and if I don't have the puck, 
they will take a picture of my car on a 360 scale, triangulate where I live, what my zip code is, my birth, my address, and they'll mail me a bill for that thing. But if I want to dump in at a boat ramp, I need a dollar twenty-five in exact change. I gotta lick the stamp, put it in this little thing. That's dumb as hell. Electric kiosk is all you need. Just just take what's already there and then you copy and paste it to like get into the damn boat ramp. You get your money. It's safe. You don't need somebody. Do that right there. You just made your money. You're stupid and this is dumb. Ran over. I just want to carry change. <laughs> The fight, over reopening Lake Man- the fight over reopening Lake Manassas is nothing new. In, in 2011, Brookfield Homes took the city to court after a building 60 homes on the lake. In a shock, okay. Which is located in Prince William County. The developer wanted its home buyers to have access to the lake, but the concerns of drinking, oh, bullshit, over drinking water over 9-11, which, by the way, if you live in Loudoun County, the richest county in the world, by the way, the richest county in the world, you're drinking water from the Potomac River. You're drinking piss water. So that makes no sense. But that's a very good leverage in an argument. A plan to bring George Mason University also presented a business plan on reopening the lake. Of course, a business plan to donate land for a new marina. Thus far, the city of Manassas has not been willing to exclusively carry the significant investment burden, the burden, the investment burden to open the lake. We'll just burn $100,000 a year. Partially because the benefits will accrue to non-residents. The peasants, the people that do not live in the county, will see benefits from such a public charitable event as opening up a lake for enjoyment. How dare they? Those heathens. We cannot afford to exclusively tax our residents for benefits for the peasants. I'm sorry, the people that do not live in our county. Obviously, the solution would be a private slash public partnership involving Manassas, of course. It must be private. Such a plan was developed a few years ago, but was not adequate. A charge for lake access. Ooh, ooh. Change, charge, charge. Manassas City Council, whatever her name is or her or it, made reopening the lake to the public a campaign issue last year. You know what? Good for you. I'm sorry I can't pronounce your name. (laughs) With several new council members in place, he he, he says it may be time to bring up the issue again during council meetings. You can't stick your toe in the water or someone will arrest you. How dumb is that? Are we taking crazy pills? This guy is speaking kind of truth here. It's like, wait, you touch the water, you get arrested. It's kind of dumb. It's like, yeah, it is. While while the costs to reopen the lake, the lake are not known. Avina, I'm going to actually get my wife in here because I'm really getting upset that I'm quoting this person and he seems like an ally and I'm butchering his name. Carly. Could you help me with a name? I I need to say this. I do not know how to pronounce this name. (laughs) It's kind of important to the article. Mark Avani. Avani. Okay, thank you. Avini? Avani? Avini? We're going to call him Mark. Marky Mark. His name is Mark now. Mark says they have to be less than what the city pays annually to keep people out. This is... If you're burning $100,000 a year to keep people out and you're saying that's more financially frugal, how much do you think it takes to keep a marina open? What is a marina to you? What is the definition in your eyes? I would love to debate these people. This would be fun as hell. Just to have this conversation of like, do you at least concede that it seems a little too much? According to the, and this will be good. I'm going to talk to these boys. According to the Virginia Department of Game and Fisheries, fishing alone is responsible for more than 1.3 billion in economic impact in the state. According to the Virginia Outdoor Report, citizens desire improved access to soft landings for kayaks and canoes. For the love of God, it's not just kayaks and canoes. I love kayaking. I please, I love you kayakers. I do, but you all went to Sleater's Lake, right? What is that thing? How the hell do you launch your kayak off that thing? The people that made that boat ramp were literally born in like the 1960s and said like, this is how people in 2023 launch stuff. Did you know that you can launch your kayak and canoe from a regular boat ramp? It's just, it's a concrete slab that goes into the water and you can launch stuff from there, anything from there, because then you can wheel it up and down. It's super easy versus this weird Lego float thing contraption that people have. So why does it have to just be kayak canoe? Just, boat slip that that's it or 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 whatever you know you can reword it any way in the british language but anyway that would work great um 
Access to the state waters for fishing, swimming, and beach use was was a top three need identified by the public. Who is the public? Where are these reports? Where are these these like little like like polls that we can take? But they say the top three is like I want kayak and canoe access, soft landings for kayak and canoe access, f boats. How much do people spend on boats each year? I know from like Mooney, Piney, and Hunting Run, there was going to be pullback that you couldn't actually launch a boat from there when they first started building these reservoirs. And then there was enough public outcry of like, wait a minute, my tax dollars pay for this place. And you're saying I can't launch my boat out of there. And then they had to rewrite it to where you could launch your big boat, but you had to use your trolling motor. That's insane that it feels like there's some kind of public miss. There's some miscommunication where it's like, we only want a kayak canoe boat slip and you're not allowed to have a boat or a boat is a is a um a pull behind as a, the wake boat or something of like that there are bass boats and fishing crafts that's not a canoe and it's not a wake boat we use those all the time why can't we just have a regular boat ramp why are you afraid of having a boat ramp that's just interesting to me the alliance wants to see the lake reopen to non-motorized boats and to fishermen non-motorized what is motorized is electric motor a motor like it, it's just ugh. It just feels like a lot of these rules are written by people that aren't outdoorsmen. Shocking, right? Or people that don't know how to do finances. But yeah, that's the article, and I'll pin that. Um, I'll pin that article in chat because I just think that's insanely fascinating. Just, and it's not just like Manassas; it's everywhere. We live in Northern Virginia. We live in we live in Maryland, which is insanely developed. And the people that get on the boards of these things are not outdoorsmen. They don't understand what we're doing. It's, it's sometimes like the gun debate too, things like that, where it's like, what are you talking about? It makes no sense. It comes to conservation when people are talking about conserving things. And I saw this really with hunting for deer where they didn't want hunters around. And then they were shocked. Like we have a lot of deer and a lot of Lyme disease. We don't know why. And the hunters like, yeah, I wonder why, but those are the people that are making our laws. And it's just, it's, it's insane. You can look at a golf course, but you can't play on it. Absolutely. Stephen Lloyd. I wish Loco would open up Goose Creek Res again. Unfortunately, a lot of these, it was an excuse. We all know this. It was an excuse to grab power. That's all it was. They use it as an excuse. For your safety, you're not allowed to have fun anymore. For your safety, we have to lock you in your house. So it that's all it was. And, and Goose Creek, you know, a fun fact, and I think I've said this on the show before, but with Goose Creek, it used to be the case where they were going to in, I think it was the 80s or 90s, they were going to turn Goose Creek into a massive reservoir. The reservoir would have been so big, it would have backed up to Middleburg. And because it was going to affect Middleburg, they shut that shit down real quick. Uh, that has got a lot of money in it, and they were not going to let that happen. But again, this gets into the point, and I'm going to do an episode specifically on lake building, because I think this is fascinating, where... People don't want to build lakes, but if there's a lake they can get their hands on, they will build around that thing. No problem. And I thought it was interesting that the other two weekends ago, I got to go up to Lake Holiday for the first time since I was like a, like a wee lad. I was you know, super young and I got to like see see the dam and fish from the dam, something like that. But it, anyway, I I went up there and I got to explore with, with some friends, talk about the history of the lake and about how many houses were there. And then I looked online to be like, well, how much are the homeowner fees to have a lake here? And I calculated the homeowner fees out. And I realized that with the homeowner dues, the homeowners association there collects between 700,000 and $1.5 million a year. That's how much they collect for a little lake. That's 300 acres. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And if there's any dam issues or dam repairs, they pay on top of that. So you think that the homeowners association for Lake Holiday ballpark between six hundred thousand to one point five million dollars a year they pocket. That's a lot of money. And you think they're still building houses, and they go up in value. If a lake, if you build a ten thousand acre lake, and then you build two houses for every acre in each house in those two acres is $800,000. Those numbers start going up. And I think there is a lot of money to be made about building houses. And then the issue is like, well, is, can they recoup their investment? I think they can. 
because it's getting to the point where there's value in waterfront property and the value is so great. And because they don't have it's supply and demand there, there's not a lot of supply. And so the demand goes up, the value of those places go up. That's why like Anna prices just keep skyrocketing. So they're not like keep skyrocketing. So there is a case to be made in the future. If you build a two to 300 acre lake and you throw houses around it, you're going to recoup your investment eventually. Then you'd be like, well, the Chesapeake Bay Association, I, I get that. But I think that's the deal that's going to be struck is there's enough money there. As housing prices get more and more insane, the value gets more insane. I think they're leaving too much money on the table. And I think, again, it always comes down to money. And I think that's why lakes will be built again, smaller ones, because you could make a deal with the state or the Chesapeake Bay Association. Like, we're going to donate a million dollars a year to you or you get a cut of the fund every year that we get from the homeowners fees to have this place. What I would like to see that happens though, is that Virginia or Maryland is like, okay, listen, we're going to give you some kind of blank bonus or something like that to build a lake. We'll let you build a lake or whatever. In return though, whatever deal we strike, you have to put in a department of wildlife resources park with a boat ramp. And then you can build around that lake for as much as you want. We don't care. Now it still has to have regulations, all that stuff. But I think that's the deal that needs to be struck. It gives you the development that you want, the the waterfront property and all that stuff. But the difference is it's the park is not owned. The park is not owned by the development. The park is owned by the state. It becomes a state park. Everyone wins. You get the you get the properties, you get the beachfront, blah blah blah, lakefront stuff, and you get your ramp, and you get to fish. Are we gonna have another like hundred thousand acre lake? I wish, but we're never gonna have that. I think, but we could have a bunch of one hundred to four hundred acre lakes. Virginia could easily do that, and it makes financial sense. I think. And once I get the spreadsheet dialed in, I'll, I'll, I'll have a conversation about this. And I'd love to have a conversation about something else about lake building because I really do think like it's gonna come back there's going to be value in it, not just for water, but for just pleasure. And I think that'll happen, especially if people want to buy speed boats and you don't want to go to deep Creek. I mean, think about it. Like if the prices get too absurd at Lake Anna, what if they shut down Lake Anna? That could happen. I mean, it's a long shot, but what if they just said like, Hey, because of safety, there's too many people at Lake Anna. It's too dangerous. Some kid, some Senator's kid got killed in a jet ski accident. So all of a sudden they'll be like, for your safety, all of Lake Anna is now private unless you're vacationing there and have a rental house or you have a little slip or like a little stamp. You can't launch a boat there. Sounds crazy, but what would stop people from doing that? They'll just, just like, you know, Stephen Wood said with 9-11, we're going to close down Goose Creek because of safety, your safety. You know, because the senator's kid died in a jet skiing accident at Lake Anna because it was too crazy. For your safety, we're going to have to shut down the lake. So if you own a home, you're allowed to be there, no problem. If you're vacationing there, you're going to get a little slip that says you're there from here to here. No problem. But now this is closed and it's no, no, we're not trying to stop people. We're doing it to protect you from you. That could happen. Why, why couldn't it happen? Is it that crazy? Who knows? Let me know what you think in the comments. So thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, that ends the show and I'll see you guys next time on fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.